Nokia 6.1 Plus was out not too long ago, all of us were surprised with Nokia's aggressive pricing, at least according to its own standards. It was an all-round device except for a couple of areas in which it fell short of other smartphones in the same price range, which made it slightly hard to recommend. However, the less expensive sibling, which was also announced alongside the 6.1 Plus, has now hit the shelves in the Indian market at a much more affordable price tag and surprisingly, an even better chipset in the form of the Helio P60 along with the same handy form factor and a premium glass build. As Nokia finally struck gold in the price sensitive Indian market, we'll answer that for you in our full review of the Nokia 5.1 Plus coming up next on techpp.com. Hey guys, this is Sumu from TechPP and before we tell you if the Nokia 5.1 Plus is the smartphone to purchase for you in the upcoming sales season, make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on any of our videos. Without further ado, let's get straight into the review now. Let me start off by saying that this phone checks a lot of boxes. First off, the glass back in a handy form factor is what distinguishes the Nokia 5.1 Plus from phones priced in a similar price bracket. Yes, the side rims are plastic, but that doesn't take away the superior in-hand feel of this device. I enjoyed using it as my daily for the past few weeks, and if given an option, I would rather use a phone this size compared to the trend nowadays of going 6.5 inches and above with the display size. Speaking about the display, the one on the Nokia 5.1 Plus is a 5.86 in 720p panel with a notch that looks like it went binge eating on a Saturday night. Yeah, it's oversized, but as Flossie Carter says, it is what it is. The quality of the panel, however, is fantastic and the first time I had a few of my friends handle the device, there was no way they believed me when I said the resolution is 720p. In fact, I would go as far as saying this is one of the best 720p displays I've seen in a long time. Let's talk about the strongest suit, at least on paper, of the Nokia 5.1 Plus, its performance. Now this was a mixed bag. No doubt the phone performed extremely well when it came to opening apps, switching between them, playing games, anything of that sort. But I had a few occasional hiccups or stutters while using the device, which according to me has to be blamed on the software. If you've seen my Nokia 6.1 Plus review, in case you haven't, you can find it here. I mentioned I faced some occasional force closes or unresponsiveness at times, which persists with the 5.1 Plus as well. Given that Nokia's track record with software updates has been impeccable, I expect these issues to be addressed real soon. There's 3GB of RAM along with 32GB of internal storage which should suffice for most use case scenarios. There's a hybrid slot in case you wish to add a microSD card as well. Being a part of the Android One program, the Nokia 5.1 Plus should also be one of the fastest devices to receive the Android P upgrade in this segment. Oh yeah, the most important way to judge a phone's performance in recent times, PUBG works fine. I wasn't really happy with the battery life on the Nokia 6.1 Plus, but the 5.1 Plus with its 720p display along with a 3060 mAh battery does considerably better and gets me through a day without any issues. The supplied charger however is a 10W adapter, so no quick charging here and it takes a little less than 2 hours to top up the phone completely. Also kudos to Nokia for throwing in Type-C at a price of 11,000 rupees. So they usually say save the best for the last, but I've done the exact opposite. Cameras. The cameras on the Nokia 5.1 Plus are nothing to write home about. The rear 13 plus 5 megapixel f2.0 rear shooters captures images that are at most above average quality due to poor dynamic range which either results in completely blown out or the other end of the spectrum, completely dark segments in an image. Macro shots turn out good though but low light performance lets the 5.1 Plus down again. To be fair, at this price we can't really expect exceptional low light performance but phones like the ASUS Zenfone Max Pro M1 perform notably better. The front facing camera is an 8 megapixel shooter with an aperture of f2.2 and does a fairly good job in most lighting scenarios barring dark environments. The support for portrait mode on both cameras and the edge detection looks good. Just a side note, I tried installing Google camera to see if that makes any difference to the camera performance like it does on every other smartphone. But unfortunately, Nokia seems to have disabled Camera 2 API on the 5.1 Plus, which is contrary to the 6.1 Plus, which had it enabled right out of the box. So that's pretty strange. Right then, who is the Nokia 5.1 Plus for? If raw performance is what you're looking for, accompanied by great software support, which includes updates to two major Android versions, along with a battery that can get you through a day's usage, and a solid build along with a handy form factor, and can compromise on the cameras a little bit, look no further. 
However, if you're looking for a slightly more balanced phone with a marathon battery and slightly better cameras to go along with a larger and sharper display, the ASUS Zenfone Max Pro M1 seems like a better option. Competition will never cease to exist. I mean, there will be phones that do better in some aspects compared to other phones. But we can't deny the fact that Nokia has built a solid offering, especially at the given price tag of Rs 10,999. And this is a phone that I would recommend to anybody if cameras aren't of highest priority to you and you wish to purchase a phone from a trusted brand. I hope you were able to make a decision based on this video. And if you have any queries or suggestions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, may the tech be with you.